the thing moves, opens, and closes. Well, the FBI made it to CES this year. It's something you may not have expected. Why don't you get it by now? Welcome back to CES 2020. I am here at one of my favorite places. I'm gonna go through the entire area for the next couple of days and then give you my top five things from CES 2020. It's all gonna be right here on What's Inside. Let's go find some fun stuff. Tools to analyze your data and ensure it's trusted. AI-driven insights, maximizing the impact that AI can have on your entire organization. Elon Musk is a little scared of artificial intelligence. I've seen the movie iRobot. Well, the FBI made it to CES this year. The FBI has a pop-up booth, the Federal Bureau of Investigations. They're not even in the convention hall. It's just this random hallway before you even go in to the actual convention area. They are informing people about intellectual property and about like cyber crime and stuff. Actually kind of interesting, I went and talked to them. Um, I didn't ask if I could vlog with them because, I mean, they're FBI agents. They're at a public place, in a way, but still. Hey, FBI put in some work. Last year, I started with a toilet that you can talk to. We're actually going to be getting that toilet inside of our house in a couple of weeks, so we'll make a full video about that soon. But I think I've found my favorite thing on day one. Welcome to the Fart Lab. That's right, this is Procter & Gamble's booth, and one of their brands is Charmin. You guys know Charmin from the ultra soft toilet paper that my wife will only use inside of our house. The idea is you don't ever wanna walk into a stinky bathroom, that's like the worst. They've identified the gases that are inside of the average human fart. Let's pretend like um, somebody was in the bathroom. <laughs> You can see the smelly gases are coming out of here. If you had this in your house, you could walk up to the door and it would tell you, wait it out, don't go in the door. It's like, big old biohazard, don't go in. I would love to have this in more public places. This is what we're doing in 2020. They lived only to face a new nightmare. Hey Alexa, bring me my toilet paper. The second area in the Charmin booth is one of the most talked about things here at CES 2020. The people at Charmin have fixed the problem of having to make that awkward walk to find toilet paper in the drawer around the corner and save the day. Save the day. Like, that's amazing. That is what technology should be for. It's precision technology. I'm gonna test it out, so here we go. I sit on the toilet. And there it goes, the door is opening and two robots have come out in this demonstration. One of them is Charmin Ultra Strong, and one of them is Charmin Ultra Soft. I like blue, so I'm gonna go with blue. And there you go, it saves the day. You didn't have to get up and walk around. Thanks. Goodbye, robot. Thank you for the toilet paper. I love you, robot. You're my favorite robot in the world. You're the best. And again, it is a concept. It's not something that's out there. Alright, the next thing at CES that I think is super cool is with Mercedes-Benz and I have exclusive media access before the actual show starts. We're going to see their concept car. It's called Mercedes Vision AVTR. And it's a concept about what the future can look like. AVTR might look, sound familiar. It's based off of the concept of Avatar the movie. And in fact, James Cameron, the director, is supposed to be here tonight to um, kind of unveil this car. But before that thing happens, we're going to go get some shots and check it out before anybody else sees it. I have 10 minutes with the car. I brought one of the highest touted videographers I know. Mr. Zach, you're hearing everything. Get ready for Avatar Car. This is the Mercedes Vision AVTR that is inspired by Avatar. I'm kind of speechless, I'm blown away. It looks kind of like a reptile, like or like a fish that has the breathing gills on the side, kind of like an Avatar. This thing moves, opens, and closes. And then look at the bottom. 
It looks like the road is moving down here. And then check out the wheels right here. If you remember in the movie Avatar, when they jump on their horse, they take their little tail and they connect it to the tail of the horse and it like sinks their brain together. A car is not a car like we're used to it in the past. And technology is a huge component of that to allow your car to do the things that you want it to do without you even having to tell it. It has a little Mercedes logo in the middle and you can put your hand on it and it moves and it controls based off of the way you move your hand. But then also you can put your hand up and you can use hand gestures to control your car. I remember when Casey Neistat came through our small town and I was asking about his settings on his electric car. He had one that was Casey Autopilot and it actually takes his seat and puts it down and lays it down a bit more when he's on autopilot. But in the future, if it truly is fully autonomous, then yes, why do you need to sit straight up? So the Mercedes Vision AVTR, yes, it is one of my favorite things at CES 2020, and I hope we see a lot of this in the future in 2030. And I know I said that this was my dream car that I went to Tokyo and saw. I think I have a new dream car. Will it ever come out on the market? Not in this form or fashion. When 200,000 people come to CES, traffic is insane. You get so many Ubers and taxis and buses. The problem is you've got the Sands Convention Center, which is here near the Venetian, and then you have the Las Vegas Convention Center, which is down the road. And sometimes your meetings don't line up and you have to go back and forth between them. The other problem is because there's a lot of international people here, there's tons of smoking. You can't smoke inside the buildings here. So in America, it's not very common to smoke inside buildings. So every time you walk outside where there's cars, it's like this cloud of smoke just hits you. I love ping pong, I love robots, and this combines both of them. This has been around for a couple of years here at CES, but it looks like it's been upgraded every single year. This is a really good ping pong player that's playing against him, and this robot's movements are incredibly quick, doing the backhand, the forehand. This is an assembly line. The company that makes the ping pong table is like a robotics and AI company. And I love seeing all of the different numbers on the screen of the access and like how it's turning and how it's calculating. It's amazing what people can do with coding with computers these days. Sometimes you ask for things and you don't think it's gonna happen and then it happens. I just asked if I could play on the ping pong robot machine and we're here. So I'm gonna test it out and see what it's like. Hunter, here you go, hold the camera. The sweatier I get and the angrier I get, it's measuring me all the time and it will like be easier on me. Okay, we're going. Oh, that's a bad hit. One point robot. Gotta get a point. Robots be nice, it's not that I was getting angry. It says that I'm happy. It says that I'm super happy. I am. It's not lying. I'm happy. I had fun. This is a robot that I played ping pong against. And I think if I could get better at ping pong, I could challenge this robot. Hey Alexa, bring me my toilet paper. Even though this is my fourth year coming to CES, I learned something new every year about different locations. And right now, I'm in the Sands Convention Center on the first floor. It turns out in this area, they have a bunch of businesses that are based off of a geographical area. So we've got Israel over here. We've got companies from France over here. But right now, I'm in the Seoul, Korea zone. Supposedly, the mayor of Korea is gonna be here and they said maybe I could meet him. There's 20 companies that are here from Seoul, Korea. Seoul, if you don't know, it's a city inside of Korea. It actually has over 10 million people. So what the government did is they took some money and they helped fund certain small businesses. And then they sent these businesses here with their really unique, cool ideas to find some money from venture capitalists so that they can get some more funding and make their business grow and be a big company hopefully someday. This one's called Nuvi Lab and it's really creative because if you ever tried to track your calories and the nutrition that you have and the food that you're eating, this machine goes down and somehow reads the food that's on there and is able to calculate how many calories and how many and what type of nutrients that you're about to eat. I think that's very useful when you're trying to be on a diet, especially in the new year. Here's a really interesting product by a company called Dot Incorporation that is also in Seoul, Korea. That's part of the government incubator program. People that are blind, they should be able to have a smartwatch too. And this is it. It has braille built into the watch. If you get a message, like a text message from somebody, It'll vibrate on your wrist, you can feel it. These little dots will move into the braille so that you can understand what the message is that people are sending to you. They also have a tablet if you want to read the newspaper. This is definitely one of my favorite things that I've seen here at CES. entire presentation was all about how they have 5G Wi-Fi through the majority of the city. They have cameras on every single corner that are analyzing the data of the traffic. And so if there's an accident somewhere or they need to move the flow, 
in real time, the AI or the people that are running it can change the street lights and divert traffic different directions without having like bodies out there putting out cones and doing all that stuff. Hello. I'm Dan Marco. Thank you for letting me come and talk to you today. Okay. So it's my honor. How do you feel about electric cars in Korea? Are they are people using electric cars like they do in America? Oh, of course, yes. Every buses and taxis and vehicles are being changed into the electric or the dioxin car. Okay. 5G is the uh, firstly implemented in Seoul. I can safely say that the speed of communication in Seoul is really the speed of light. <laughs> okay. Nothing frustrates me more than slow Wi-Fi speed on my cell phone or my computer. Sounds like I just need to get to Seoul, Korea and I'll have lightning fast speeds. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bear. Okay. The last thing that I want to show you today is something that I stumbled upon that is one of my absolute favorite things at CES. know that we love golfing. When you carry the bag, especially with as many golf balls as I lose in a round, wouldn't it be nice to have a golf cart that you don't have to pull, that can just follow you around? You can just clip this onto your belt. No, walk it. Look at that, it's not. I didn't touch it. Does that have a very good turning gradient? Oh, it's coming. <laughs> On a golf course, it's not as tight as here. Oh my gosh. Maybe not the greatest thing to do in a convention space with people everywhere. The golf cart that is the robot caddy for yourself. I actually seriously need one of these in my life. So there's my five favorite things at CES. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know which one was your favorite and what did you think about all these things. And should I be back next year? Thanks for watching. Can I do it again? Okay, here we go. You're my favorite robot in the world. You're the best.